Hello everyone, this is Maurizio, editor-in-chief of Power Electronics News and Embedded.com and today I am at Electronica showing in Munich and I am here at the boot of Onsemi with Hassan El Khori, CEO of Onsemi. Hi Hassan, thanks a lot for being here, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Thanks for having me again. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. So, Electronica, so this is one of the most uh, trade shows in the electronic industry. So, what's news uh, from Onsemi? What uh, key technologies are you showcasing in these days? Uh, so, that you're right, it is where everybody comes to have uh, uh, their new platforms or their new products uh, announcements happen. Uh, we worked uh, all years. I've given a little bit throughout the year of what's to come at Electronica. And I'm very proud to announce uh, our Trail platform uh, that we announced uh, this morning. It is a really the most competitive and most advanced uh, yep. analog mix signal. And it's not advanced because it's on 65 nanometer, or it's not advanced because of you know, the BCD. It's advanced because of the way we approach the, the platform. Advanced from the voltage range, one to 90 volts. Advanced being at 65 nanometer. Advanced being at up to 175 degrees C. So no matter what aspect of the design elements that you can look at, it is a very competitive and very advanced versus all the competition, all the similar uh, technologies out there. And more importantly, we approach it in an SOC-like methodology. Mm -hmm. So the building blocks are there for us to really be able to support the, uh, uh, the breadth of applications that we're going after. And most importantly, with a fast time to market, because everything is getting faster. Of course. Where the, our markets get faster, whether it's AI or automotive or industrial, we have to do the same thing on our platform development to be able to address those markets and pivot right away. Good. So let's talk about uh, electric vehicles. So on semi is uh, heavily involved in electric vehicle ecosystem. So just uh, let's uh, mention some uh, technology in terms of traction inverter, but all the power power conversion. So how how, how you are working this uh, in this market? How is on semi positioning to to meet the, the needs of this market that is evolving fast fast evolving? I mean, so what are your expectations in this market that now probably in Europe? is uh, seeing a slowdown, but probably next year we should see more in terms of electric vehicles. Yeah, uh, outside of just the electric vehicles, the way we approach the market, if you look at our mission and you look at our approach and strategy, we actually started with intelligent power, intelligent sensing. Yeah. Because that's the technology that enables everything you mentioned, including cars. So if you abstract the markets and you look at what is it that we're looking at, it's actually the sustainable ecosystem. And what I mean by the sustainable ecosystem, it all has to be interrelated. You talked about electrification, cars, absolutely. But without charging network, you're not going to be able to get a lot of the vehicle adoption. And also, without the cars, you're, nobody's going to put chargers for no cars. Now, let's say you have the cars, you have the chargers, where are you going to get the power? Mm -hmm. Grid electrification becomes important, energy storage, yep. what, from renewable to energy to support the grid. Then you go all the way to, you have all that data now, whether it's intelligent cars or ADAS and so on. Okay, where do you process all that data with the AI revolution that's happening? That is consuming as much power per rack as almost an entry level vehicle, EV car. So that power demand is really the most common denominator. So we're addressing it at that most common denominator with technology and capabilities. Because if you have the fundamental technology and the capability, you can service all of these power needs, which are very similar from a power demand. Yeah, fundamental is important everywhere. That's right, that's yeah. right. So with the automotive electrification that is a major focus, do you see, where do you see other opportunities? Uh, talking about electrification, probably transportation, marine, avionic, do you see some uh, 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 markets? There are, I mean, you, you see a lot of, uh, there's, you know, startups, mm -hmm. but there's also uh, mainstream uh, companies that are, already going into that in, in that direction. Indeed, the last, uh, last APEC, uh, there was a, a keynote about electrified aircraft. That's right. So all of that is going, and that comes with efficiency. Just like in, in the vehicle, yeah. you talk about miles, uh, 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 mile range for an EV. As battery technology also advances, you have more power density, because you don't have the option of stopping midair yeah. to re, you know, recharge the, uh, the plane. So that becomes a bigger player, but we, you can see the rate of advancement on battery has accelerated in the last three to four years. 
there's more talk about more capacity, more talk about fast charging, et cetera. So that's going to enable uh, uh, these different applications. But the intent is there because you're already seeing it in the market, both on the marine and on the air transportation. Okay, got it. So another topic that I would like to, to talk with you is uh, wideband gap. Wideband gap materials, silicon carbide, uh, gallium nitride, for sure they offer superior performance compared to, to silicon. So how does on semi see the role of wideband gap semiconductor materials evolving in this, uh, in this market, in this broader semiconductor market? Yeah, we see it very as mainstream and complementary. And let me explain what that, what that means. As you get to the need of efficiency and the need for higher power, wide band gap becomes the most efficient way of getting there. Whether it's switching frequency for a GAN or high power, high voltage for silicon carbide, wide band gap has a play in it. Now, there's also costs associated with it. Yep. Whether you agree with today or in the future, will it be at parity? It's, it's, it doesn't matter. It's a time question, but there's a discrepancy. And our view is silicon also has a play. And our ability to offer all of these technologies from silicon, IGBT, and silicon carbide and wide band gap gives the customer the most optimal solution. We're not gonna walk into a customer design and say, oh, we have this, that's the best thing you can do for your system. Because we already do hybrid modules, which has silicon silicon carbide. Yeah. Well, if, that, if you're looking for a performance and you're looking for a cost associated with that performance, then to get that best balance between the two, you may have both technologies. So although wide, if you have high performance, 800 volt performance vehicles, silicon carbide is going to be the path. Yeah. But it's not necessary to have it one size fits all. Having that flexibility, having the variability is what makes, especially for us on semi, is the most optimal solution for our end customers. And if you think about our success is tied to our customer's success, the most optimal solution is the winner and that's what we're able to provide. So another topic that also you already mentioned is AI. So AI and IoT markets, so they are, are booming and are demanding uh, intelligent, integrated uh, uh, solutions. So how OnSemi is, uh, is planning to address this growing demand in terms of uh, intelligent, in terms of uh, integrated solutions? Yeah, uh, Treo, perfect segue. One of the primary uh, uh, reasons, it's not the only application, but one of the core end applications for the Treo platform is the AI is everything from on the power, if you think about the power tree mm -hmm. and what we at OnSemi can do. And power tree starts with energy storage outside the, the, the cloud you know, infrastructure. Then it goes into the server, PSU, battery back, all the way to the GPU. That's the power tree. We have silicon carbide at the high power you know, PSU level, and we have Treo now right close to the GPU or CPU. Yes. That ability to service all of that in a high efficiency uh, semiconductor offering is our ability to capture that market. And Treo is fundamental to that as you get closer and closer because you need more integration, higher power density, because you know I always say the, the PCB is very expensive real estate. So the more integration you get and the higher efficiency you get is easier on cooling. You don't need a lot of room for cooling, and, and, and. It just, the benefit just rippled through the whole system. That's our focus. So when I talk about the most optimized solution yep. that we just talked about, efficiency and power is maybe not directly related to the semiconductor component we ship, but it is system level optimization we have to be able to offer our customers. So another topic that uh, I would like to talk with you is uh, the manufacturing. So with mm -hmm. the with a growing interest in reshoring uh, the semiconductor manufacturing in regions like uh, United States, uh, Europe, and so on. So what is your approach in this case uh, to addressing the, the manufacturing needs, but in particular to ensuring uh, the supply chain uh, security, resilience? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, I'll, 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 give you, I'll give you our answer, but it's not directly related to a lot of the onshoring effort. Uh, what we've embarked on from a strategic perspective has really been focused for us on supply resilience. So a lot of people talk about supply assurance. For me, 
I, I look at both. Supply assurance is one thing, supply resilience is the other. Well, now, what does that mean? Uh, disruption can have multiple forms. Disruption can have a form of a, a natural event, a flood, a hurricane, what, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. A disruption can be something as, as extreme as COVID. Uh, disruption can be, you know, whatever. It, it, you, you don't know where the disruption. A disruption can be geopolitical. So when you look at it, again, the most common denominator, you're solving for a disruption, not for a specific, yes. you know, uh, uh, geopolitical. Because then you forget about the other one. That's great. You have a bulletproof uh, 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 supply uh, plan and strategy for one thing. Well, what if the other thing happens? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Customers mm -hmm. need supply resilience. So that's where what we've done. And the way we've done it is through our fab right or manufacturing right. You know, we've had multiple uh, sourcing. <coughs> we dual qualled a lot of our products. Uh, dual qualled in geographically independent sites. You know, our benefit and our competitive advantage is our manufacturing footprint. A very diverse, geographically diverse, but also technology diverse manufacturing footprint. What that allowed us to do is use the opportunity and use our footprint to dual qual things. Mm -hmm. So if there's a disruption, even if it's a power glitch in a fab, you're not gonna impact your customer. When you take it that way, onshoring, offshoring, integration, and so on, become a secondary uh, resilience outcome. So we feel pretty good about where we are. Uh, customers uh, feel very good about our ability to highlight our resilience to maintain their assurance and that's the win-win uh, that we're, uh, we're uh, going at, and that's we'll continue to do that. In addition, we've also announced, for example, silicon carbide. We talked about it from how, how important it is for the industry. Yep. We have a supply chain vertically integrated. What we've done and we've announced here in Europe is we're also going to have a new vertically integrated european base uh, 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 ver uh, silicon carbide uh, supply chain. That again, it's a when I talk about independent, geographically located here, you're adding to that resilience, even for a technology as unique as silicon carbide. Get it, get it. So Hassan, my last, uh, my last question about, uh, so we need the uh, human resource, we need the professional, uh, so to move on, to stay competitive. So, and, uh, so innovation is a key, of course, we talked a lot during the, during our latest Wind Down Friday yep. and other interviews. So what, how on SEMI is, uh, is engaging uh, innovation, how does on semi foster innovation and uh, attract top talent, skilled professional in this, uh, in this regard, and also what about collaboration in terms of industry and mm. academics from your point of view? Yeah, it's, it's actually both, they're interrelated. You, when you attract top talent, you drive innovation. But if you have innovation, you also attract top talent. It's, it feeds on, it, uh, on itself. So how do we do both? Uh, to me is independence. We're an engineering company. We're a technology company. To bring top talent, you have to have the promise and the, the, the atmosphere yeah. to thrive on innovation. And to thrive on innovation, of course, you have to have uh, governance and you have to do the right thing and the processes to have the discipline to deliver great products. But you can't have the over constraint to stifle innovation, which means you have to be comfortable with risk taking. Because innovation, when it works, is great. When it doesn't, oh, it's too risky. So what's your appetite between mm -hmm. the two? I personally have the appetite, and, and having risk doesn't mean we stay away from it. Having risk means we have to do better at managing that risk while still pushing the boundary. If, based on what you see today in Trail, let's just talk about the innovation that across the whole Trail platform, Innovation on the methodology, you know, the SOC like, innovation on technology, innovation on power, innovation on temperature range. How would that innovation all be if somebody two years ago, three years ago said, we're going to do one BCD on 65 nanometer across mm. all of these? Most people that are not in the innovation or the risk appetite would have said, that's impossible. Let's find something else to do. Versus, it's hard. It's never been done, so what do we need to do to do it? And that's a different mindset. That mindset is what attracts talent. And when you get that talent, it makes those decisions easier. Easier. 
So that's why I said it, it kind of fuels itself. So I'm very proud that we've, we've highlighted this culture of innovation and risk-taking, but very disciplined risk-taking in order to deliver the innovative advancements that our customers need. Thanks a lot, Hassan. Thank you. Always a pleasure to, to have you and uh, have a good show at uh, Electronica. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, thank you.